sleek and stylish, two words that are often bandied about by car reviewers such as myself. But in the case of the new Volvo XC60, it really is justified. I mean, just look at it. It looks just so, what's the word? Distinguished. The XC60 follows in the footsteps of the larger seven-seat XC90 and competes with the Audi Q5 and the BMW X3. It's packed with safety features, has a beautifully minimalist interior and prioritises relaxing comfort rather than outright driving dynamics. The feeling of this car being a baby XC90 continues on the inside because it's virtually identical to its larger sibling. Now, all cars come with a nine inch tablet touch screen. It works in the identical way to the XC90. Some of the icons and some of the words and the font are just a little bit larger, but it's got the same functionality. So you've got your controls for the applications here. We've got the media screen. We've got Apple CarPlay on this particular car so you can connect Connect to your phone and play your music. Here we've got some typically cheesy music. Yes, that is my playlist. And if we go to this screen over here, we've got all of the car's functions. And because this is the hybrid model, we've got our battery hold and charge functions. It works pretty well. It is just a little bit difficult to use on the move. German rivals have a swivel wheel and the functionality is a little bit better. Having said that, the quality in here is on par with German rivals. I have to say, it does feel pretty well screwed together in here. It's almost as good as an Audi Q5. Everything feels really lovely to touch. There are some scratchy plastics here. Can you hear that? But generally speaking, it's all pretty good in here. But it's the design that strikes the most. It is so calm, so cool, and so stylish in here. You actually look forward to getting into this car because it's such a nice place to be. Now, storage-wise, while well, we've got a cubby here with a couple of cup holders, a space to put the key, Another little place there, not quite sure what you put in there, but it's still nice nevertheless. Under the armrest, we've got your charging ports. The door bins easily pass the car by a big bottle test, so a 1.5 litre bottle of water can fit in very easily. And the glove box, as you guessed it, is large enough for a big packet of crisps. The XC60 is offered in three key trim levels, momentum, R design and inscription, and none is poorly equipped, coming with leather seats, sat-nav, adaptive cruise control and LED headlights. This R design car gets sports seats, 20 inch alloy wheels and a driving mode selector, while the Pro Pack adds a heated steering wheel and a powered driver's seat. Oh, and if you go for the £1,500 IntelliSafe Pro Pack, you'll have as close to an autonomous car as you can without resorting to buying a Tesla. Back here and there is plenty of room. It's probably on par with the Audi Q5 for rear passenger space, so that means there's lots of it. I mean, I've got tons and tons of knee room, and even with this panoramic sunroof, headroom is pretty good too. I'm just over five foot ten, and I'm not struggling for space at all. There are some quite nice touches back here. We've got air vents in the pillars here to have some cool air in the summer months, and. Unlike the Volvo XC90, the doors actually come underneath the bottom of the car, so it means the sill is always kept nice and clean so your trousers don't get dirty. Storage-wise, while well, there's a armrest here with a cubby, there's a couple of cup holders there as well. There are easily reachable isofix points, which is great for families. There's also a ski hatch, which I did forget to mention, which is great for your winter holidays. And generally speaking, it does feel nice and light and spacious back here, even in this R design trim that's got lots of black and Alcantara trim. However, middle passengers will be complaining a little bit because if I hop over to the middle seat, it is relatively comfortable and headroom is absolutely fine, but the footwells are really very small in this car. So if you're gonna be sitting in the middle, you're gonna be squabbling for footroom. Now there was a time if you owned a Volvo, you could be sure you'd have the largest boot in the class, but times have changed, and especially so with this XC60. Thanks to its sloping roof line, it has got a smaller boot than most of its rivals, one such being the Audi Q5, because the Volvo's boot is 10% smaller than the Audi's. But really, they are just numbers, because when you look at the boot, it is of a pretty good shape and size, nice and square, and it's easy to load items right to the boot ceiling. Now let's just grab the large, car by suitcase, slot that in, the middle-sized one and the smaller one. 
and you can see you've actually got quite a large size boot. There are a few bad things about this boot, however. There are no handles to fold down the rear seat, so you have to go running around the side. It's not a huge problem, but rivals do have handles in the boot, which does make life a little bit simpler, but you can slide your luggage right to the front of the boot. You do get a flat loading area, so it's easy to slide items right to the front of the boot. There's also very little storage back here. Yes, there is a net here, but on the boot floor, there's precious little. I mean, in this plug-in hybrid model, for example, we've got the charging cables. Another bad thing is the height of the boot is pretty high. Now, if you go for a car with air suspension, you can lower it. It's pretty quick and easy to do so. And it does mean that if you do want to sit on your tailgate or load dogs in, it is just that little bit easier. Like I say, there are falls and against this boot, but generally speaking, it is still of a pretty good practical shape and size. The XC60 is just so comfortable to drive. Now these front seats are just so supportive and probably one of some of the best seats in the business. The driving position is almost spot on as well. And apart from the R design model, which we've got here, all models ride incredibly well. But I would recommend spending an extra 1,000 pounds on air suspension, especially if you go for the R design model because it has a lovely ocean liner quality. It really rides out the worst imperfections in the road. To drive, the Volvo XC60 is very much in the comfort part of the spectrum. It's very much like the Audi Q5. It just feels very refined, very relaxed, and very much unlike the Jaguar F-Pace because the Jag really does thrill you when you drive it quickly. The Jag steering is nice and sharp and crisp, whereas in the Volvo, it's very light and very over-assisted. Even when you change the drive mode and put it into power mode, the steering does weight up and the air suspension does lower, but it still feels, it still feels though it doesn't really want to thrill you. It's a bit like dancing to Beethoven. You can just about do it, but it's not really advisable. All the XC60's engines are two litre units, with the entry level D4 diesel offering 187 bhp and the D5 diesel 232 bhp. Pick a petrol XC60 and you'll either get the 251 bhp T5 or the 401 bhp T8 petrol plug-in hybrid you see here. While I'd love to recommend the T8 hybrid, it's only available in higher trim levels, so you'll need to spend over £55,000 if you want one. Same goes for the D5 diesel. That costs over £6,000 more than the D4, and I'm sorry to say it's really not worth it. Part of that reason is that the T8 hybrid is a little bit at odds with its purpose. It is incredibly quick. I mean, with over 400 horsepower, it really does get up and move. But this car, if you do that all the time, you're gonna get rubbish fuel economy. This car is also very expensive. Now this R Design Pro hybrid model comes in at nearly 60,000 pounds with a few options on it. And you really have to want that hybrid powertrain because for that type of money, you can have a Porsche Macan GTS. And I think I know which one I'd prefer. Both do different purposes, both do different jobs, I know, but £60,000 is a huge sum of money for a car like this. Volvo claims this XC60 T8 will return 135 mpg. As usual, it's massively optimistic. Our car only had 250 miles on the clock and it returned 32 mpg. Perhaps with a few more miles on the clock, this would have been closer to 50 mpg. But to justify the hybrid, you need to make sure you have a charging point at home and at your workplace to get anywhere near the claimed 135 mpg. For most, the higher spec engines will be too expensive. Stick with the D4 diesel and T5 petrol, sit back, relax and enjoy one of the calmest cars money can buy. If you've enjoyed this video, click here for our review of the Audi Q5 and our SUVs playlist. And don't forget to give this video the thumbs up and click our logo to subscribe to our channel.